Okay, in this next tutorial, uh, what we're going to do is make some modifications just to pad sizes again, just going in line with our previous uh, simple tutorials there. And then what we're going to do, with most important now, is that we've played around, done some editing, is then run a, a DFM check and more importantly, a netless uh, comparison to make sure that we haven't violated uh, any rules with the editing that we've done so far. So what I'll do in this particular case is I want to just Let's just say I just want to increase the, the pad sizes here. Right? And I can also make changes. Let's say, for instance, uh, I wanted this particular pad to be square. So first of all, I'll do is show you how to enlarge the pads. It's the same as you do with traces or anything else. You'll just select as such right here. And uh, you'll notice also that I picked this trace, which maybe I don't want to do this time. So what I can do is, first of all, use a selection filter, which is located right here. And what it does is simply by turning off any of the other objects that you don't want to deal with. In this case, I just want flash or pad. Uh, in Gerber, they call it flash. Uh, you know, in design, they, they would call it pad. So it's pretty much the same thing um, if you want to just keep that in mind. So now when I select just the flash, now I can choose a, a wide area. And notice now the trace is not being selected. It's just the pad only. Uh, and one thing to go that's to note in the, about the filter that's pretty nice also is that you can choose each in Gerber each uh, item has a decode which is basically a width assigned to it so you can enter in the decodes uh, specific numbers if there's specific decodes that you want to modify and I'm sure we'll have another tutorial in the future uh, showing how to do that uh, and here it kind of explains that that feature but in any case I've got my four pads selected let's go ahead and enlarge so go to tools fabrication grow shrink and again this feature works with pads, traces, anything you select, it's going to increase the size. So as you'll see, the, the size was increased by a little bit here. Now the next thing I'd like to do is let's just change this, the shape of this, the decode, uh, or from being a circle to something else. Uh, so I'll go ahead and, and what you'll notice about Fab 3000 is whenever you glide the mouse over an object, uh, it will show up in the status bar down here. So as you see right here, it shows decode 58, and I'll click it just to make it permanent. So we know that this is the one that, that I want to change. Um, and if it's just this one only, I can go to the aperture table. I know that that's a circle, 58. So what I can do here is, let's say, um, number 60. Uh, basically, you can select any open one. There's a 10,000 uh, available decodes. So there's always a lot to choose from. Choose a shape that I like to have. So let's say, for instance, in this case, I want to be fancy. And uh, let's say I want a diamond. Uh, in the size I want is 58 let's say just to keep up in line with the other one so I'll type in 58 and this is mills by the way if you do prefer millimeters just simply select here and it will make the conversion for you um, obviously I should have saved this first before I did the conversion because it went back to the defaults okay so I hit enter so we've got diamond 58 and then now you'll see that every decode uh, that I've selected has been now switched to this diamond shape. So it's kind of just something to just show you the, the ability and the features uh, that you can do. All right, uh, now we're going to go ahead and run a DRC uh, DFM check. So what I'll do is I'll just turn all the layers to be complete, zoom all just so I know what I'm looking at. It's not critical. And then I'll run the DFM check. And one thing to keep note of, I would always select, choose, do this option, override existing nets. This will force Fat 3000 to re-extract uh, brand new nets. Uh, and another nice thing that it can do is FAT3000 can, while it's running a complete DFM check, can also compare your IPC net netlist simultaneously. So it's a real nice feature to just ensure with one step that everything's set up. So when I select that, I just happen to have the netlist waiting right here. All right. And again, here are all the settings, here are all the features that FAT3000 will check for. Uh, many of these aren't critical, but if you see a red light stoplight then you'll know that they're a critical feature so let's just wait for this to finish okay at this point fat 3000 has finished running the dfm check and what you'll notice is that there's a bunch of uh, yellow stoplights which again aren't critical kind of just letting you know that uh what's going on here uh, however it is saying that we are missing copper and uh, external nets missing so we'll need to definitely go back and check to see uh, what caused that and we'll do that in the next tutorial.